Matt Reeves highly anticipated The Batman, released earlier this year, and suffice it to say, it deserved all the hype. What was more surprising was Paul Dano's rendition of The Riddler, and for today's episode, we'll be sharing with you a hidden easter egg that ties The Batman to the very first Riddler story, and how The Riddler proved he's Gotham's ultimate villain. So make sure you keep watching if you don't want to miss out on today's topic. So how is The Batman tied to the very first Riddler? Riddler story. A distinctive, even historic comic book event is The Riddler Year One. Not only is it a DC book that serves as a prequel to The Batman, one of the biggest films of the year, but it was also written by the actor who played the role, Paul Dano. It tells the story of how a put-upon, socially awkward accountant eventually becomes a terrifying serial killer and notable Gotham City villain. However, there's one small historical detail tucked away in the book that ties it all together. To begin, let's take a look at the first Riddler story. A pre-Riddler Edward Nashton is depicted on the Gotham subway playing with an app called Riddle King, which among other things has crossword puzzle workouts in the opening pages of the Riddler year one. These are the three obvious clues, a water utensil, a public way, and a formal dinner, respectively. Edward has already completed two of the those clues with the answers street and basin, respectively. The final clue, banquet, is the answer for puzzle fans. These three seemingly innocuous words are important pieces of Riddler's comics and television history, and they are forever linked to one of the greatest superhero films ever made. The Riddler first appeared in Bill Finger and Dick Sprang's 1948 Detective Comics number 140. And yes, you can attribute yet another all-time Batman character to Bill Finger's imagination. In it, Riddler's first public action as a costumed villain is to commandeer the cross-cleaning company's enormous crossword puzzle billboard and provide Batman and Robin with three clues that he promises will lead them to a crime he intends to commit. Stuff like that is exactly why we love comics. These are the exact same clues that appear in the Riddler year one, and their solution of Basin, Street, and Banquet led the dynamic duo to believe that there is a big civic charity banquet being held at the Basin Street Hotel. But the Riddler enjoys wordplay, you see, and Banquet was instead meant to be read as bank wet. Batman and Robin waste their time investigating a banquet that never gets robbed. The Riddler, year one illustrator, Stevan Subic, who in addition to his knowledge of bat history, creates fantastic moody and atmospheric line work for the book, decided to incorporate this nod to the original Riddler story. He put that in there, and it's been very important to him, Dano tells Dan of Geek in an interview, so this is a part of my backstory when playing in the film. Games, that's the only place that Edward has ever gotten any positive feedback in his life. That was my point of view on this when acting. It's like the game, the riddle, cracking it, he had to find ways to get anything that felt good by himself. Gotham never gave him anything to feel good about. So you see him playing a game and it says, you win, and then he feels better. I said, we've got to design this game. I don't know what to call the game. I was like, what's the right tone to strike here? And Stevan put in this Easter egg callback, and he was really excited about it. Now, let's talk about Batman 66. Frank Gorshin's role as the Riddler in the 1960s Batman TV series will live on in infamy. However, he took a temporary hiatus from the part during the second season of that program, and John Astin of the Addams Family took over. Even for a comparably iconic comedic actor like Astin, Gorshin's tights were tough to fill, but his two-part run as the Riddler is nonetheless worth watching, in part because of how they adapt the very first Riddler story from Detective Comics number 140. The Basin street and banquet hints, as well as the flooded bank trick, are all present and correct in particular. Wait a minute, there might be more to these water hints than we initially believed. Given how much of old Eddie Nashton's strategy in The Batman revolved around his goal of flooding Gotham City, it just goes to show that there are many different ways to interpret the Batman tale, and none of them are invalid in the end. In other news, we've recently seen the Riddler 
Riddler in God form, which just goes to show he's Gotham's ultimate villain and not the Joker. The Riddler's ultimate God form demonstrates that he is Batman's true dark equal, not the Joker. The Earth 3 version of the Riddler rises to Godhood in DC's Trinity series, receiving a significant transformation in appearance and power. Even though the God-powered Batman villain is not from the main DC universe, Earth 3's The Riddler demonstrates why the murderer who enjoys solving puzzles poses the greatest threat to the Dark Knight and Gotham City. Even though the Joker is Batman's true adversary and has devised elaborate strategies in his battles with the Dark Knight, the villain lacks the same level of intelligence or strategic thinking as the hero. Nonetheless, one Batman maverick, who is his full equivalent, is the Riddler. The villain has repeatedly demonstrated that he is on par with Batman in terms of intelligence and strategy, even though his silly costume, which is themed after a question mark, gives him the impression of being somewhat of a joke. However, in his god structure, the Riddler showed why he's Gotham City's definitive antagonist. The Earth 3 version of the Riddler, dubbed Enigma, joins Morgan Le Fay and Despero in Trinity, a DC comic story by Kurt Busiek, Mark Bagley, Art Tiber, Pete Pentazis, and Pat Brousseau. Enigma and Despero succeeded in erasing Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman from history and ended up taking their symbolic place as the anti-Trinity in an alternate timeline. The threesome climbed to godhood, with Enigma transforming into a strong being, anxious to assist with saving his own reality, Earth 3. This alternate version of the Riddler shows that he is Batman's true dark equal by taking over Batman's role in the DC Universe and becoming a god. And in the DC Universe, Riddler finally became Batman's true dark equal. In the end, the Riddler became a god with incredible powers that could destroy the entire world because he was smarter and more skilled than Batman. Enigma's reign as a god would not last long because he soon turned on Morgan Le Fay in the dark reality. However, with his new powers and role, he showed that he was important to the whole universe alongside Batman and fit the same archetype as the DC hero. In the end, the Joker is more like Batman's dark sidekick than his twisted counterpart. Riddler fits the bill of Batman's villainous counterpart and can hold his own against Batman's intelligence far more than the Joker. It doesn't hurt that the Riddler demonstrated that as a god, he was Gotham's ultimate villain. So what else is there to know about the Riddler? Well, it seems that he knows Batgirl's real identity. The security and confidentiality of their identities are crucial for the Gotham City heroes, which is why it is worrisome that the Riddler seems to have discovered Batgirl Stephanie Brown's identity with startling ease. Stephanie's lack of anxiety about her identity being in the possession of one of Gotham's most deadly brains is even more concerning. Even though she previously dealt with the Riddler as the vigilante, spoiler, allowing her previous persona to leak into her present one could have fatal repercussions. In John Lewis, Pete Woods, and Andrew Peepoy's Robin number 113, Stephanie Brown, the daughter of the minor supervillain Clue Master, visits the Riddler in her civilian identity to learn more about her father's schemes. As both he and Riddler had been working together out of her father's house, Stephanie was already familiar with Riddler. Riddler was interested in Stephanie's activities, but he wouldn't tell her the truth about what her father was planning, despite their connection and her threats of violence. Then, in Batgirls number 12, by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad, Neil Gouge, and Rico Renzi, Stephanie and the Riddler finally cross paths as the Batgirls try to solve the case of a serial killer in the hill in Gotham. Focused on the fight at hand, Stephanie doesn't show any signs that her identity has been compromised, but Riddler escapes when she loses her cool and tackles him out of a window. As they square off in the serial killer's apartment, Riddler makes it clear that he knows who Stephanie is, taunting her throughout the fight. Traded in your birthright for a cowl. What a pity. And you're so much like your father. To outsmart Riddler, Batgirl must first face the riddle surrounding her family. It's not completely absurd to think that the Riddler already knows Stephanie's identity. It would make sense to associate her fascination
connection with her father's activities, which marked her early vigilante career with Cluemaster's daughter. Additionally, her Batgirl suit significantly incorporates components of her spoiler costume, such as the purple and black theme. Finally, Riddler could easily spot that Batgirl physically resembles Cluemaster's daughter. The problem is the fact that Batgirl does not appear to recognize the distinction between her previous meeting with Riddler as Stephanie and the current one as a Bat family member. With that, we're wrapping up today's episode about Gotham's ultimate villain, our resident Riddler. What do you think about the Riddler story? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching today's video, and before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. See you next time, and thanks for watching.